On the third day of all projects, my true love gave to me safeguards. This project is a relatively short one. Um, the last time I did it, it only took me about four or five hours, but it was my very first time doing it. So this time I'm expecting it to go a lot more quickly. So what I'm doing is making a protective sleeve uh, to go onto one of our dock lines. Uh, we have some major wind coming our way and I want to make sure that those lines are protected. Uh, and this will be the second time that I've done this project before. So this time I feel like I have a grasp of what I need to do. So there are several things that I need to get it done and I'm going to show you what those pieces are. I've gathered up all of the supplies that I need and I've started the project so I'm going to walk back and just show you that we have this great roll of fire hose material that was given to us by our friend Drew um, who we know from the Winterport uh, boatyard where our boat was for quite a while and I've got a speedy stitcher which is this handheld tool uh, for going through heavier fabrics like it can be used to repair sails it can be used on things like this fire hose material or canvas or anything like that and it's really durable and it also allows you to do some quick repairs if you need to I've also got rolls of velcro that I've already removed the backs and adhered them to this fabric so that when I'm done this will roll up and adhere together and essentially make a tube that will go over the dock line. So my first step was to cut this to 14 inches. We started out with ones that were 12 inches long and we realized that 14 inches, inches was actually better for us. Uh, it gives it just a little bit more protection. Well, my hair is stuck to it somehow, yay. Uh, so I used the uh, measuring device to make sure I had 14 inches. I've got a durable pair of scissors that we've used for fiberglass, so they're pretty bunged up, um, but they really work well. Uh, and then I've also got waxed thread from the same company that makes the Speedy Stitcher and it's just this really really durable almost twine like thread that has a wax coating on it uh, so it is preserved in the salt and uh, sea environment a lot better. And this is just a little tray that I use to kind of make sure that all my little end pieces are, aren't going all over the floor. And I've got this box because the Speedy Stitcher company recommends that you have uh, like a block of cork or something that's got a little bit of um, substance to it, but you can go through it. So that way if you're going through a place and it's really hard to get through it, you can push down and kind of go through the fabric and that box. So these are the pieces that I'm using to put this all together. What I've done here is I've taken a lighter and I've singed the edges of the fire hose where you see it's a little dark and the reason for that is to make sure that it doesn't unravel over time just kind of seals those threads in place and now I'm using my speedy stitcher or sewing y'all sometimes it's called and I'm going to go through and I'm going to make stitches all the way across the top around and back down again on the other side and I'll do that for both the hook and the loop side and the reason I'm doing that is because I just don't want that Velcro to come loose when it's getting a lot of friction and uh, protecting those dock lines. So it's kind of an aggressive sewing tool. You have to push it through. Get your loop on the back side there. There we go. And then you physically thread through the loop. Pull it tight and through and then you pull from both sides to make a nice clean stitch on both sides that's nice and tight. And then you can move on to the next stitch and every once in a while you just kind of check back through and make sure everything's getting tightened up appropriately and you move on to the next one. And so I'll go up and down both sides for both the hook and loop side um, of the Velcro and make sure that it's going to really last because I don't want to have to do this project like every month. I want this to last for months or maybe even years. So now I've finished the stitching on one side. So the side that has the actual the hard part of the Velcro is all sealed on both sides and all the way around so that it's not going to come undone. You know, it's going to take a lot to rip that off of there, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to flip it over 
and I've got the soft side of the Velcro that I've adhered to here because it had adhesive on the back. So it's nice and firmly in place, but I just want to stitch the same way I did over here. I know it's not super pretty, it doesn't need to be, it just needs to be strong. Um, I'm going to stitch the same way on this side so that both sides have the same amount of strength and then it will be able to curl over and become the perfect tube over uh, a deck line and be protected. And I've finished sewing the other side of the Velcro. So we have one side all secured, flip it over, the other side of the Velcro all secured, and then we can roll it together and create a tube. And the dock line just goes right in there, or if the dock line's already in place, you can put it on because it's easy to just take off and remove. Not the most pretty thing in the entire world, but it is going to keep the dock lines from chafing. So that's how we put together a chafe guard for our dock lines. Make sure you follow Sailbums on Instagram and on Facebook through the links below in the description. And also subscribe here to our YouTube channel so you'll see our next video when it comes out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.